Welcome to IS Squared Seminar Web Series. After watching this video, let us know if it helped you or if you have any other questions or comments. And be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for new videos just like this. Thanks so much for watching. Hello everyone. My name is Neville Mendonca and I am with IS Squared. Today we are going to talk about the basics of identity, access and governance. In short, IAG. Here are the topics. A brief introduction about myself. We will see how identity management is done in a typical organization without a centralized IIG platform. We will go over the challenges faced by organizations. Then we will jump into a typical IIG implementation. And finally, we will end with a conclusion. A brief introduction about myself. I have been in the industry for about 20 years. I have worked in the identity and access management domain for the most part of my career. I have worked on some popular uh, IIG products in the market, IBM ITEM, IGI, SailPoint, IIQ. I initially worked as a developer on IBM's ITEM product and then later moved into services where I have done deployments with ITEM, IGI, and SailPoint. We have our own product courses and I am the lead architect for the IIG module. This is how the identity management infrastructure looks like in a typical organization without a centralized IIG platform. On the left, you see the different types of user entities. The employees and contractors, you often refer to this population as your internal workforce. They are onboarded by the HR and the profiles reside in the HR management system. Workday, PeopleSoft, etc. The other type of internal user entity that's gaining popularity is the RPA, Robotic Process Automation. These entities need access to perform their job duties and have a similar identity life cycle as a human. Then you have the business partners. These are external entities who need access to internal systems or applications. Lastly, you have the suppliers and customers who would be accessing the various portals hosted by the organization. On the right, you see applications and systems the, user, the users will be accessing. Many of the applications and systems will be connected to one or more directories. The users are authenticated with the directory and authorization is managed using directory groups. You will see a lot of standalone applications on-prem or in the cloud. Then they may either authenticate with the directory or may maintain the user credentials locally. The authorization in this case is done locally. There are also those legacy applications. Organizations have the portals hosted for suppliers and customers. There are different ways in which access is provisioned for users into application and systems. Many organizations in these days have automated processes to provision most of the user access into their directories. There might be some exceptions, such as administrative access that might be managed by the directory admins. However, if you don't have a well-architected identity management platform, then you would still be doing many of the tasks manually. A simple example, pulling a report for a SOX audit. The standalone applications in most cases have less automation around the provisioning processes. And for the legacy applications, it may all be manual. There are different admin teams, mostly working in silos. Most of the processes are manual, time consuming, and many times have security loopholes. Imagine a user having direct access to a cloud hosted application who leaves the organization and the access is not terminated on time. There can be negative consequences. As far as the org portals, the end users in most of the cases register themselves. And on the back end, you would have the portal admins managing the user life cycles by running manual jobs. What are the challenges when you don't have a centralized platform for identity access and governance? 
accounts are scattered all over the place. There is no way to identify who owns them. Some users may have left the organization already, but their accounts are still lying around since there is no way to figure out who owned them. Users own multiple accounts and have different types of access on various systems applications. There is no central place to find out. You have multiple application administrators managing accounts and access in silos. They have their own identity management processes. There is no central self-service portal for end users to perform basic tasks such as password resets or to request access. Users call help desk to reset the passwords, which in a way has security loopholes if you don't have strong procedural controls in place. Access requests are processed manually by various admin teams and thereby have lengthy SLEs. If the terminations are not processed in a timely fashion, there can be negative consequences. Pulling simple reports of who has access to what resources can be time consuming and requires coordination between multiple teams. This becomes very critical when it comes to audit requests, which in most cases have shorter SLEs. It's critical to have periodic validation of privileged access. You often find users with administrative access that they don't know. You don't see organization-wide security policies, for example, a strong password policy. This leads to security challenges. You don't see an organization-wide standardized process for access requests. The processes are confusing to end users. You often find users getting access to resources without proper vetting. Audit trail for an access request may or may not exist. Almost the entire workforce in an organization requires the default birthright access on various resources based on their role within the organization. You do not find, you do find automation for some of the major systems, but there might be several other systems where processes are manual and cause onboarding delays. You want your employees to start work on day one when they are hired. How does an IG application fit into the organization? You have one IG application to handle all your identity access and governance processes. There are various vendors in the market, SailPoint, Identity IQ, IBM, ITIM, IGI, i squared Orsus, and more. All the applications work on the same basic principle. Here are the key steps. Aggregate the user profiles from different sources, HRMS systems, databases, or even files into the IG application. Aggregate the account and access details from the system's applications you want to manage. Correlate account access data with the user profiles. Automate and streamline IG processes. The IG application has connectors to connect to systems applications and automate the user and access management functions. The system's applications can be on-premise or in the cloud. There are out-of-the-box connectors shipped with the product for systems applications widely used by the organizations. Example, Active Directory, LDAP, Salesforce, etc. There are generic connectors that can provision into applications that publish user management APIs using standard protocols like REST. If these options don't work, the IG application has a framework the customers can use and develop custom connectors, as long as the application system you want to manage has APIs available. What about those applications that don't have any user management APIs? This is usually the case with old legacy applications. 
you can still manage these applications within your IIG platform via integration with your ticketing tool. In this case, the IIG, applic the IIG application converts the access request into a ticket that, that's assigned to the administration team for the application. And the provisioning is manually done by the administrators. Even though it is still a manual process, the process itself is managed within your centralized IG application. There are also those cases where some of the provisioning steps cannot be automated within the IG application. For such use cases, there are plugins that can call external scripts or tools. There is no one way to implement IG, and it generally varies from organization to organization. However, it is important to understand that the implementation of an IG platform is a journey. You need to follow a phased approach. There will be multiple iterations to solidify your processes. You have to be clear on the overall objectives and have a strong executive support and endorsement. The first step is to aggregate your user profiles from the authoritative sources. You may need to segregate data from multiple sources. Then you would aggregate accounts, access data from the target systems you want to manage. As you do this, you would be correlating the account and access data with the user profiles. The correlation is done based on some unique user attributes that exist both in the user's profile and on the account. For example, the user's staff ID that is also stamped on the user's Active Directory account. It generally takes two to four weeks to get most of the data correlated, but there will be follow-ups. It can take weeks or months to get 100% of the data correlated, especially if the accounts are being managed without following standard procedures. Once you have your user profiles and accounts aggregated and correlated, may not be 100%. Now you have a centralized view of your user base and the access they have within your organization. At this point, you can pull user access reports from your IG application. Most of the reporting templates come out of the box with the product. Most of the IIG applications also let you create ad hoc reports. The IIG applications usually store this data in a structured database. And if you have the skills, you could also analyze the tables and create SQL queries to pull the reports from backend database used by the application. Once you have the critical reporting in place, you can then work with the service system owners of the application systems and initiate certification campaigns. These will be manual campaigns where you would be providing Excel reports to the certifiers, taking their inputs and working with the application system administrators on the remediations. The best part is you are pulling all the reports from a central location. No longer do you need to go to multiple teams the turnaround is much lesser. This should surely make your auditors happy. Now you have your data aggregated and correlated, at least most of the data. The next step is to automate some of the identity management processes. Start with your major applications, systems, and then repeat the same for the other applications you have brought into your IIG platform. Define the policies that will automate the birthright provisioning based on roles and attributes. Provision the default access the users should get when they are onboarded. This will include mapping of attributes from user profiles to accounts on the managed targets. The mapping will either involve copying the data as is, or there can be some data transformations. The basic entitlements can be assigned based on the user's roles or attributes. Also start pushing the data into the accounts that were previously aggregated. This will clean up the account data on the targets and keep it consistent with the authoritative sources. 
End user terminations can be automated at this point. When the user profile switches to an inactive state, the IG platform will immediately disable delete the accounts on the managed targets. The IG applications maintain, the, maintain an audit trail of all the transactions processed in its backend database. You can generate a lot of reports on this transactional data. For example, list of users onboarded or terminated. Most of the IG products come with a self-service user interface out of the box. The IG administrators can enable or disable options based on the user roles. You can allow your end users to log in and reset the passwords. You can allow your help desk team to reset passwords for all the users in your organization. Make sure you put strong controls around how the passwords get communicated to the end users. You define your password policies to make sure your end users set strong passwords. You can enable password change reset options for end users and help desk. You can let them type the password or let the IIG application generate the password based on the password policies. You can enable password sync so you have the same password across one or more of the managed targets. All the transactions are logged in a backend database and you can pull reports such as who changed the passwords and when. The next step is building roles and defining uh, SOD policies. As for the roles, you already have done part of the exercise when you automated birthright provisioning. Now you go deeper. You may need to do some analytics. Some IIT products have built-in features for role mining. This is an iterative process that evolves over time. This is where you, you will define the SOD policies. Again, an iterative process and involves working closely with the application teams. A small note here, SAP is one system that has its own GRC or governance risk and compliance module. And some IIG products have connectors that can directly interact with the SAP's GRC module. Access request workflows. There will be exceptions where access to entitlements or roles cannot be automated and end users will require the access on a need by need basis. Most of the IG products have workflow designers that can be used to automate and streamline business processes around access requests. There could be entitlements that give privileged access and end users may require to get appropriate approvals before getting access to them. There could be trainings the end users have to take before getting access to certain entitlements. These integrations can easily be automated in workflows. It is important to have one standard process that's common to all access requests in the organization. All the transactions processed by the IIG application are saved in the backend database. Various types of reports can be pulled. Auditors look for such reports. Example, when did users get access to a certain privileged entitlement? And who approved the requests? These audit logs come very handy during forensic investigation. There are usually retention policies to save such audit logs, used usually for several years. Access certifications. Access certification should be a continuous process. Privileged access should be certified more often compared to non-privileged access. The IG application come with the out of the box templates for different types of certification campaigns. All transactions, including the actions performed by the certifiers, approve, revoke, are saved and can be audited. Non-user account management. Access requests and workflows for service or application accounts can be automated. Processes around passwords, such as password rotation, can be enforced. 
integration within PAM solutions can be done. All transactions performed are saved and can be audited. Reporting. Templates for a number of user reports come out of the box with the IG product. Some of the commonly used reports are user access summary reports, who has access to which entitlements and to which targets. Privileged access reports, who has access to privileged entitlements. End user request reports, the requests placed by end users and processed by the IG application. User termination report, users that were terminated in a specific period and the accounts that were terminated. Ad hoc reports, reports the administrators and auditors can create using the IIG application UI. Administrators can also pull these reports from the backend database using SQL queries. Forensic investigation, a lot of data, user account and access, and transactional data is stored by the IIG application. This plays a big role in forensic investigation. Some of the queries you would perform. What all access the user has? Any privileged access? Any access to critical apps? When was the access requested? Who approved this access? If the user is terminated, was the access disabled on time? Was access given outside the standard process? History of account access changes for the user over time. Other ad hoc reports can also be pulled from the database. This data can also be consumed by SIEM tools and merged with other data such as network access logs and can be very valuable. Conclusion, it is important to have a centralized IIC platform a strong endorsement from key executives is important for this to be successful. Choose a phased approach. Prioritize the business critical applications that will give more ROI over others. Periodically review and update your processes. Constant improvement will allow your IM program to mature as your organization and the industry matures. Build a strong culture within your organization around identity, access, and governance by conducting internal workshops and trainings. That is all I had today. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining ISWare's web series. And for more videos, training, and informative information, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and visit our website at isware.com or sale at isware.com.